Hello, everyone, listeners of both the 93 Crystal Moons broadcast and the Hive Mind 1984 radio broadcast. Um, this evening, we're going to be um, completing the Paranormal series. We started a show a few weeks ago, Paranormal uh, Studies Part 1. Uh, we left off last time uh, with a discussion of a story I was telling about an entity that had entered my home. Um, we'll be continuing that story, and um, also both of us will be discussing some other phenomenon and related topics to the paranormal and um, other dimensions, even some energy stuff. Um, but I guess I first wanted to um, let everybody know that we are uh, joined on with the Star Theory Network, um, which is Kyle Hunt's uh, research network, and he um, he has his own uh, website you can check out, uh, startheoryisit.net. Yes. Yes. And um, we also recently have some pages on there that will be featuring some of our work, and um, he also has a blog talk radio broadcast that can be found under the same name, Star Theory. So uh, check that out. He has some great stuff out there, and we're very glad to be part of his research team. Um, so um, good evening, guys. Uh, hello. Thanks for having me. Hi there. Of course. Of course. I couldn't finish it without you. <laughs> um, well, I guess, uh, I guess I'll just finish the story from last time first. Yeah, why uh, don't you just... Um Pick up where you left off. You said you know where we got cut off last time. And for anyone listening to this that ha did not hear our uh, part one of this broadcast, you can hear that on my YouTube channel or blog talk, um, which is youtube.com slash hivemind1984, and the blog talk channel goes by the same name. So take it away. All right, last time we left off, I was talking about, um, I guess I'll do a, a, a terse recap here, that a girl's entity and spirit and past that I felt in high school on my bus route followed me home. And I didn't even know it until my mom had said that she had been seeing a child around. And then after a couple of years, I found out it was the same kid. Uh, judging by descriptions and things of that sort. Go back to part one. But um, what we got off, cut off last time, and I was talking about the most recent experiences I had with this young girl's entity who's about eight years old. Um, it was actually Easter weekend. Um, there had been a flare-up of activity um, a few weeks prior. My mom had been seeing her around the house a lot. Um, she tends to come out a lot at Easter. I'm not sure why. I guess she really likes that time of year. It's, it's warm out and there's candy and things of that sort, and she tends to pop up more. It's weird. And um, it was to the point that my mom started hearing her playing in my room a lot, and then I actually started feeling a presence when I was in my room at night studying and, or just online reading and things of that sort. The air would feel... Um, really heavy and dense. It felt like somebody was looking at me, which is a feeling and experience I had before. And I was like, uh-oh, so what's going on here? And then I started, um, I would get chill. And it'd be, it was warm out, too. It was a couple of weeks that a lot of this stuff was going on. It was very warm out, and there would be no reason for me to be as cold as I was. And the air conditioning wasn't on, nothing of that sort. Um, so that happened, I don't know, for about two weeks. But then... Um, Easter weekend in particular, I was uh, sleeping and I heard this breathing and I felt something at the foot of my bed and um, I didn't want to look up actually. Like, not that I thought she'd be gory or anything, but I I haven't seen an entity in many years and I was just evading the shock of it. It's like as curious as I was because I saw her through like an experience when I was younger um, from a distance, but not directly um, is how I would put it. I, I just, I didn't want to look at her. I knew she'd make me sad, and I knew that she needed to be let go. But I still felt her there, and I didn't look up, and then I heard, like, a little whimper. And then I knew that it was uh, it was time for her to go, and that um, I was going to have to do some kind of cleaning or something had to be done soon because she was even getting sad, and I think she realized finally what was really going on with um, 
being stuck in this um, in-between realm. And um, uh, the last thing that happened um, with her activity is that um, a couple of days after Easter, um, there was this um, stuffed rabbit that my mom had given me. She, always, she has this thing of buying stuffed rabbits every year. And uh, it was on my bed. And uh, when I came home from school one day, and I'm not sure why, because it had been on a shelf that very morning. I mean, there, there were no kids over. There was no one messing around in my room, but it was just sitting in the middle of my bed. And I asked my mom if she had been cleaning or something or if it fell, what was going on, or if the dog had been up there. And she said no. And I was like, all right, so that was pretty obvious that something was going on. And then, strangely enough, um, about a week after that, Hive and I went to go uh, listen to some music um, that some people were playing locally, and we ended up at a house. Like, I didn't know anything. I wasn't sure their location was until we literally pulled up, and it was about two or three houses away from where I felt her um, her presence and where she lived when I was younger, when I would see flashes of um, parts of her life and then inevitably her death. So that was really strange. Um, I was I was kind of in shock. I mean, I wasn't disturbed because I knew that her spirit had moved on and came to my house over the years. But I um, it was a little shocking pulling into um, a driveway and you're like, wow, this is pretty much the location. So, uh, pretty unexpected, to say the least, in all places. Um, so after that happened, um, uh, Hive has been doing some research through, um, I don't know, Blue Hands site. What was, what was his site? Uh, Luhan.com, L-O-O-H-A-N.com. Okay. Well, um, he has some really interesting perspectives. And um, he had said that there was some um, activity going on around me in particular, but he didn't think that it was the uh, the spirit of the child that had kind of followed me over the years. Um, but he... Um, he ended up telling me that um, he had some uh, some other better entities to help cross her over, and I burned some sage for her that same evening, and um, my mom hasn't said anything about her. My dog hasn't had one of her weird staring moments for long periods of time. I haven't felt anything around, so um, he, I think he was a big help, and um, I said my own little goodbye in a sense, and I think she moved on. But, um, yeah, it was just this uh, progressing little haunting I had going on and she's finally where she needs to be you now. So um I don't know, I have to, did you um want to discuss that's pretty much the end of it, you know, it's cleared up now. Um well what did you want to talk about next then? Um oh another um interesting thing that you had mentioned is that um from surrounding the supposed death of Osama bin Laden, according to the media. Um, you had some interesting dreams prior to this? Yes. Um, I actually had a dream of the Twin Towers burning outside my house the morning before Osama bin Laden was supposedly assassinated. Wow. And what do you make of that specifically? Um, I don't make too much of it, really. It's just kind of... Uh, an accepted part of my reality that precognitive dreams happen, so. Have you had any other experiences like that? Um, a few. None that come to mind at this time, but uh, one other one actually does, which is also kind of um, related to Luhan of Luhan.com. Um, whose site I've been reading a lot of lately. Um, I pretty much read most of, actually, the information that he's got up there and his blog to do with um, Organite and um, energy, radionics devices, <coughs> um, spirit entities, and, you know, astral, uh, or whatever you want to call it, etheric realms and, and the kind of attacks that can, or other beings that can dwell or come from those planes of existence. And um, he, like me, believes that 
not all um, dragon or serpent entities are necessarily bad or evil, specifically dragons, which are, um, you know, obviously a rich part of um, Chinese culture and and other Asian cultures um, and just around the world, really. It's not confined to there, just a prominent um, one. And... Um, but in the, uh, the his blog, I believe he was mentioning, you know, various um, entities that he uncovers throughout the uh, throughout the universe via dowsing and you know other intuitive means. Um, you know, I'm I'm trying to um, do an interview with him, so maybe that is something to look forward to in the future. Not. 100% on that as of yet, but um, anyway, about the dream, uh, I was reading his blog, I believe, and it mentioned something about the only um, negative race of dragon, you know, beings that he's ever encountered was black, of the Black Friday, and that actually goes back to something me and Galactic Wacko were talking about way, way back last year when I first had him on the show. We end up talking a lot about dragons and various dragon myths and um, films, you know, that had dragons in them and stuff like that. And I mentioned a dream that I had had just the night before, which was kind of synchronistic at that time even, that I had um, f engaged in some kind of combat against a black dragon, you know, in my dream. And uh, I don't know, I just thought it was pretty cool. Um, and worth mentioning, since we're talking about dragons at the time. Well, then, I, like, just this week, or, you know, last week, I was reading this blog here, and, and Luhan's talking about, you know, going to a uh, etheric war, if you will, against a bad race of black dragons, you know. Hmm. And they said that's the only bad ones that he's ever really encountered, and I was like, and the weird thing was, this was, I was reading from his, his blog archives, and he had made that entry around the exact same time that I'd had that dream. So, I don't know. Hmm. That's pretty it's kind of a complicated backstory to that, but uh, yeah. I thought that was worth mentioning. <coughs> Excuse me. And I know I've had others, um, I just can't recall them specifically, but I do keep a dream journal on and off. Um, it's a good method if you can stick with it for anyone out there interested in this kind of dream work um, is to keep just a simple dream journal. You know, there's all these different methods for how to remember your dreams and some are really complicated involving turning on and off lights to if the, and if the light actually doesn't go on or off with the switch then that acts as a trigger you train your mind to make that a trigger to realizing that you're in a dream. Well, that's really kind of complicated. Yeah. Um, you know, there's other methods where you write things on your hand, say, like, I will wake up and dream, remember, and look at my hand or something. And I've actually done that and had dreams where I would explain to people in my dreams what what I had written on my hand and what the purpose of it was to wake me up when I'm in a dream and still not fully become conscious of the fact that I was in a dream. Mm. So, wow. um, I found the most effective methods are always the simplest ones and keeping a dream journal is very simple. It's just training your focus um, on the area of dreams and the reality of that and through that you remember more and then by writing down more you you focus it just kind of like snowballs and um, it's easy to sometimes get out of that and then um, you know sometimes it doesn't seem to be as dependent on that it's a very um, inscrutable area of actually knowing anything for certain <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, that's been the simplest, you know, simplify, and that's usually good. So, just trying to give a few helpful tips for anyone out there who is also interested in dream work, as I am, and as I know you are. Mm -hmm. So, 